but uh, but it's so much easier uh, when you're a, a writer to just write, you know, wouldn't it be cool uh, than it is to actually uh, make it. It's like easy for me to design an amazing uh, video game in a story. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, as you know, it's much harder to actually <laughs> make the real thing. I, so I think uh, that, yeah. could be, that could be a good thing though, right? Because us technologists, we can get locked in by how difficult it is to build stuff. Where writers and futurists, you have the freedom of the written word, right? There's no limit to what right. you can imagine. And then the technologists more have to like figure out, can we really build it? Right. Uh, uh, and they're the only ones that uh, can really build it. If it was just left up to the writers, all this stuff would remain uh, fantasy. Uh, but that's something that I, you know, I remember hearing about Star Trek, the old Star Trek series. Uh, they had those doors that would open uh, automatically. Uh, and uh, that's what inspired those doors in grocery stores. Like people at home, home saw that and then real engineers went and made it work. So science fiction has always kind of played that role of, you know, what, what uh, extrapolating where our technology uh, might go. But yeah, that's one of the funnest, the funnest uh, uh, parts of being a science fiction writer is imagining where the technology will lead us and then how the technology once it arrives, it's going to affect people's day-to-day -day lives. I, I love it because I think it's the best form of brainstorming is unencumbered brainstorming, you know, without yeah. limit. And I think that's a little bit of what you do in your book. So nice oh, job. Thank you. You know, almost like we're taking technology and then we go to pop culture at the same time, like in, in Ready Player One and now Ready Player Two, like you have this amazing intersection of pop culture with a vision of the future and I, I think the reader or the movie viewer can almost get a little bit of a vibe of some of the things that have been important in your life can you riff a bit on some of the pop culture influences you've had we know uh, they're they're endless anybody who read ready player one knows that my my interest in pop culture is very broad but uh for Radio Player 2, there, there are some specific facets of pop culture that I took inspiration uh, from, uh, like John Hughes films. Um, huge fan of John Hughes movies, uh, especially the John Hughes movies that were set in high school. Uh, and he created his own uh, fictional high school, Shermer High School. His uh, high school movies took place, like uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off and uh, Kids in Weird Science, um, uh, Pretty in Pink. They all went to uh, a version of Shermer High School. Uh, and I was uh, always fascinated with hi high school being the, the setting for all these, you know, set in a library. Yeah, uh, Breakfast Club, one of my favorites. I love the soundtrack as well to that movie. Oh, so yeah. great. Yeah. So good. Seems like the book was so fun to write. Are there any moments that you felt were super fun without giving away too much? Uh, you know, I don't think I can give away the super fun moments uh, without giving away uh, too much, but uh, I will tell you it was, uh, uh, I 